Good evening, good evening. It is the 2nd of May, 2020. There was no video yesterday, no diary yesterday. There was a lot happening. Um, yeah, and I ran out of space again because I'm behind with editing. I'm not really good at being organized and I couldn't figure out what was going on, like how, how I do all of this and I get lost in all the directories and just my brain is dead sometimes. So I'll do, I'll just do the video and um, I won't be talking about work today, although there is a lot happening with work as well, but I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just about to make a cup of tea. And then we're going to go have a quick look outside before it gets dark. In short, I'll show you the clip when I have space on my memory card again. But a box of Gabin goodies arrived yesterday. I think I had already said that um, the Otto, Otto, Otti, as we call him, the partner of my mother, he was serving uh, the Gabin website on uh, in the Canary Islands and he got serious cravings for Gabin sausages and bacon and stuff and he just put a few things into a cart and pressed send <laughs> buy and had it sent to our house so this is the box let me put on the light so you can see it this is the box that arrived but you know, you see that, that's the box that arrived. But boxes, of course, they are not very reliable. So I cleaned the fridge. I don't actually use my fridge at all. Uh, I unplugged it when I came back in 2018 from Rome and I haven't used it since. Let me make that cup of tea. I haven't used it since, so, do you know, as you can see, I'm cold again. It's, what's going on, like, what's going on? It's May and I'm cold. Maybe it's because, maybe it's because I'm sitting down so much. Anyway. So I cleaned the fridge, and it's an old fridge. Uh, I cleaned it. There it goes. Tick. Oh my God, I haven't heard that sound in so long. And uh, this morning, I got to fill the fridge, and now it looks like this. Oh yes, gubin sausages, gubin salami, gubin chorizo, there is a smoked ham, and we also have some cheese and some smoked cheese as well. Oh, smoked cheese, oh my God. So all of a sudden we're living the gourmet life. Now, I also went outside to get groceries and uh, I had promised the offspring had not had a drink since she came home. So I got some beer for her and we also got some local hand sanitizer and this one is I mean, they're expensive enough. This was 11 euros. It's like, um, a, not a gel, but like fluid, more fluid. And it's it says, moisturizing hand sanitizer, Castle Freak Distilleries. And when you open it and you smell it, it smells like gin and tonic. <laughs> it smells like gin and tonic. So I suppose it's all good. Now, yesterday evening, 
like the cat, that big white cat, had been a uh, hey monster. Are you are you feeling left out? Are you? He's feeling left out because he can't come in to the house. So yesterday evening, um, the cat virus he had come into the house again. What are you saying? Look at you. Are you saying hello? Are you saying hello? Monster. Um, he came back and he wasn't looking well at all. Uh, the wound behind his ear, uh, he was scratching it and then it opened up and there was blood and shite everywhere. Like it was bad. And the offspring got really upset. So, um, I had said to her, I would, I would, I would try and catch him and, and see how bad it was. And so I got him on a chair, put a towel over him and was holding him and he was calming down. Like he was very agitated. He was very not well. Uh, and it smelled really bad. So when he was settled down, I called the vet and uh, I asked, could we bring him, you know, what could we do? And they said, bring him in at nine o'clock in the evening, which we did. And he took one look at him and he said, you need to stay, there's a big infection there. And it smelled bad, like. So I left him there and he's a semi-feral cat he came from Cork and um, let me go to the back of the garden he came from Cork and my ex really was adamant that he didn't want him to uh, be castrated which I didn't agree with at the time but you know it kind of is what it is so I left him I left him at it and uh, yeah, I'm sorry now that I, I didn't I didn't insist on it because this poor cat um, I'm going to put this in there maybe something was in there because this poor cat uh you know, he's like, I, I had seen already that he was missing teeth and um, there was lots of blood, lots of, uh... oh, let me sit down here, I've got a little seat here out in the back, it's not really secure but it'll do. Um, yeah, the infection was behind the ear and it was really open and deep and gouged and awful to look at so uh, we managed to get him to into a cat box and we carried him to the vet who, who said he needed to stay and he needed to be operated on <sighs> I don't know, I, even talking about it, like, I just, it's just so sad, like, it's so sad. Because I've known that cat for a long, long time. Anyway, so we left him there, and today he was operated on, and the, the there was a big, big abscess behind his ear. And they don't know whether he actually scratched it up on himself or whether he was in a fight and was bitten maybe by a fox. It's starting to rain. Um, and uh, yeah, well, they could save the ear so far, but they've left it open. They've left the wound open because they're not sure. The vet is not sure if the infection is all out. They've cut away all the tissue. And it looks like they can save his ear. 
uh, his ear canal is okay. Um, and I got him castrated. Because I actually really like that cat. And I would prefer if he'd just be with us for a bit longer. Now the vet said that uh, it's he is a, he's got all the kind of cat sicknesses. Like he's a very sick, sick animal, and there is a chance that he m may not make it. <sighs> but then again, he might. He might. A monster. So that's where we are with the cat. It, it, it was really, really sad, and the smell just doesn't leave me. Like I can still smell it. So then we had the beer that I had. Um, I had gotten a, um, a kind of chocolate Belgium chocolate dark beer, and we got some. Uh, what was it? Uh, oh no 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 no! Go away! I don't want I don't want messages right now. Mm. Um, I got some, uh, oh, there you go. Are you going to climb? Come on, climb so. There goes, there goes. He <laughs> can't help himself. Like, uh, a monster, you're something else. And, um, yeah, they're going to keep him there. And he said he won't call me now until uh, we can come and pick him up and bring him home. And they're keeping him there because they don't know uh, how bad the infection is and whether it comes from inside or outside. He's lost most of his teeth. Like he, he said he's in a lot of pain. So they've given him lots of painkillers and they're going to keep him there probably until Tuesday or Thursday and not to expect uh, any news until we can either come and pick him up or whether he deteriorates. They might try and stitch the, the what is left of the ear um, on Tuesday or Thursday, depending on how it's going. He said, but uh, he, he doesn't think he'll die, but he's not sure. So now the beer, uh, thingy well, thingy well, well, uh, cork beer. There was a cork beer, a blonde beer, which was like a EPA type beer. And we drank both of them. And I had a hangover this morning. Oh my God. Like that'll tell you how unfit I am. Um, yeah. That was really the biggest news. Beer and the cat. Now the other thing, I also got some cheap beer. And that's why we're outside. Where did he go? It just disappeared. And I made some, um, remember my snail hunts and evicting the snails out into the graveyard. <sighs> I decided that I would set some beer traps uh, before the, the, the rain washes them all out. And this is what happened. So I have four of them and one of them is really clear what happened. Uh, not so much that there are snails but slugs look at this like there you go there is one that has a death wish there's a few of them that have death wishes that is what a slug graveyard looks like <laughs> And there is four of these. Now this is a saucer and I've got like deeper ones. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of them. So I can do this for four times, which is really good. Uh, now before it really gets dark, let's go do a little tour of the, of the... I can't believe how many of them are actually there. Let me see if I can do this right. You see that? So beer traps work. That's all I know. <laughs> That's the thing I really learned is that beer traps work. Now, I was very lucky. It didn't rain yesterday and they have been there uh, for the day. So that's all good. Now, quick, go through the garden. 
So the parsley is of course still, it's, it's all growing like mad. And remember the broccoli, when it was just like small little heads and now it's like big heads. I'm very tempted to eat the last bits, but I would like to keep some of the some of the seeds, so I might not do that. It depends on whether there is another one coming up in there, and if there is, then I want then I'll eat them. Oh, there is a little one there at the bottom. Um, now then we have the chart. The charts are doing crazy well. Crazy, crazy well. Here we go. Charts. Look at how high they are. There is another snail trap in there. I'll show you. There is more suicidal. Can we see that? They love, apparently they really love the smell of the, of the beer and they just go to it and then they drown. Uh, so yeah, the chart. Growing like crazy. Here we have more rockets. chart that we planted there the other day. I think that's been in there now for about two weeks and it's getting really, it's going really well. Here we have another trap. We have another trap. Let me see if I can see it. There we have a suicidal slog. I am still wondering about my karma though. <laughs> I'm still wondering about my karma. Now this is another broccoli, this here. But it never made any 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 broccoli heads it never made any flower heads so i don't know what's up with that uh the potatoes are oh yeah here this one is coming up now as well this is really i don't remember the name but it's a, a natural um it's really good. It irritates the skin if you just use it like that. But if you use it in um, with, it, it, it's used for skin creams to calm the skin down. Uh, the berries are doing good. Uh, the potatoes are going all of a sudden are coming up. They're doing really well. There we go. Potatoes. Potatoes. Yeah, so that's been uh, slug traps, snail traps. I got two days ago. I picked lots of uh, lots of nettles, made nettle soup, and 
yeah, there you are. That was, uh, I don't know, this lettuce is kind of finding it hard. That lettuce is kind of finding it hard to uh, to enjoy itself. Um, that kind of fell. Why is that falling? Yeah. And my friends. No, you can't come in. Use that. So yeah, snail traps, vegetables growing really well, uh, and the sadness of uh, of that poor uh, poor animal. It was bad. Like I'll, uh, once I have, but once I've edited and I've got space again uh, on the. On the camera, I will. I will. I'll have a chat about those once it's, or maybe when he comes home. So yeah, so those were the things that happened yesterday, uh, May Day. <laughs> it was a quiet day working. I had. I only had three hours, which was actually kind of nice. And then, of course, there was the drinking of beer. I did uh, I did groceries. I went out and did my grocery shopping. Went to the to the post office. I forgot to get stamps for Sarah. So yeah, that was really it yesterday. Um, I had three hours of work, nice and easy. Um, I went outside, went to get beer, went to get, uh, I got her ice cream, uh, we ate too much ice cream, the bean package arrived and snail traps were set and, uh, big drama with, a uh, poor virus who is really not well at, at all, at all, at all. And who's now at the, at the vets for the coming few days to recover from like a pretty hefty operation on an abscess uh, behind his ear. And he said that as they were uh, trying to get away the infected tissue, like it just came away. They didn't even have to cut. They were cleaning it out and it just all came out. It all came out. Um, and now it's waiting to see how he heals. And yeah, successful snails snail traps i i will be in that will be my big investment <laughs> to save uh, to save the food that we are growing and it's surprising how many of them are in there and oh my god does that affect my karma does it affect my karma that they all are willing to go into the go into the beer i don't know i honestly I don't really mind. Last year there were so many of them that I'm happy to let them go. Like I'm happy to not have them anymore uh, if that is possible at all. And yeah, so we'll be eating a lot of gubin. I made the nettle soup and then we had a nettle soup with lardons because I, I didn't really get cream because I still have the thing with the shopping being in the shed for three days. Uh, before it comes into the house. Uh, 
disinfectant. Uh, I've got a very itchy ear inside. I don't know what's going on there. And I have to go and edit now because otherwise there will be no video tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I'll show you the beer. This was the chocolate beer. The Barista Chocolate Quad Belgium Ale. Oh my God, it actually smells. Like Sarah said as well, the offspring said, still a tiny drop in there. It actually tastes like, it actually tastes like chocolate. It's like chocolate beer, very, very nice. Now something exciting as well. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had uh, uh, the Barras, um, my logo, <laughs> they um, have been doing sessions every, every night uh, since the lockdown started. Uh, based on the sitting room sessions that they usually do on the Wednesday evening. Check them out. Like, just check them out. If you if you want to hear some good music and hear what, what people around this area do and some really nice, uh, some really nice artistry, check them out on Facebook. They live stream every evening for the duration of the lockdown. And this coming Tuesday, I will be playing. I will be doing a live stream from here uh, for an hour, half half nine to half ten um, GMT plus one uh, Irish time. So if you don't know what that is, if you're in the States or in Australia, uh, just look it up. And uh, uh, all the live streams are on their Facebook page. So if you want to listen to some great music, they're all there, like, and my live stream will be there as well. Uh, but that is this coming, uh, this coming Tuesday, the fifth of May, and the fifth of May, of course, is really special for me because that is what we call Freedom Day in the Netherlands, uh, which is like a, a commemoration of the 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 end of the Second World War, and in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, where I grew up. Everybody would gather uh, together on the on the Dam Square, where on the 4th of May, um, an SS officer who was detained in one of the buildings there shot dead a group of people. They forgot to take his weapon and he shot into the crowd and killed a good few. And that is uh, commemorated on the 4th of May. And then on the 5th of May, there is a big, 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 big party. And it's 75 years this year, um, the end of the war. So there you go. Thank you very much for being here with me. Today was a good day. I was waiting all day to hear about the the dog. Uh, the dog, hear me. Waiting to hear about the cat. Ah, what's going on? Like, I I've had animals in my in my head. Uh, today something strange happened again. I got a bad. I got like an. It's not a bad mark, but I got a nine from somebody and I had really great lessons. Sometimes you just don't know, like you just don't know what people think is important or not. I've been cold all day. It still isn't warm. In short, I have not looked at the numbers, but yesterday uh, I know that the United States now have over a million cases of COVID-19. Mm. The line is still going up, not straight anymore. Like it's not like I remember saying that if it could bend backwards, it would. Not anymore. It's kind of going like that. But the the numbers are probably worse than we think. The UK is, they had some really bad days there. Uh, I haven't followed Ireland. What I did hear is that also on the 5th of May, there relaxing some of the restrictions but they won't go into um, actual effect until a bit later and this would include like instead of two kilometers from the house five kilometers from the house and small gatherings of friends i have no idea how this is going to work but i was talking to two of my friends and you know some of them are getting really stir crazy so i can't believe 
like the way we talk now is, uh, you know, social distancing has become a verb. We use it as a verb. Well, we can go and be together, social distancing, you know, adjective. We'll, we'll meet social distancing. It's just bizarre. Like, so the plan is to go meet my friends out on the square, have a takeaway coffee, or bring our own coffee, bring a flask, and go sit outside with two meters between all of us and have conversations. I don't know what that's going to look like. Uh, my daughter has offered to give me some face masks so I don't look so ridiculous anymore. And I've actually decided that I will buy some as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, today was a good day teaching. I really, I've decided that I do, I really like the level placement uh, things. I now understand when they tell us um, how many people signed up. You know, out of, I, I think I've done 90 now so far, but yesterday it was like, was it like 85 or something? Out of 85, about 23 signed up, which is pretty good. That's pretty good. And it's pretty good money as well. Um, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a substantial bonus that you get per sign up. So I, I think I, you know, I will get better at this and um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. I had some regular lessons today as well, so I still have to write reports. Uh, that's really it for me for today. Thank you very much for uh, for hearing me out. I know I haven't done um, a heart meditation in a while and I, I hope to be going back to them pretty soon. With the offspring coming home, uh, the, the dynamics in the house have changed quite a lot and I realise that it's, for me it's too hard to do this thing of social distancing because she's my child. So I have to keep in mind that I, you know, that she's been travelling and I, I'm not willing to sit two metres apart from her. How bizarre is that? Like, uh, all my focus has been on not not uh, getting sick but for some reason because she came from South Korea and they do everything so different there and she's been in this kind of habit for so long I find it except I find it an acceptable risk whereas with anybody else there is no acceptance on my part of any risk whatsoever so it's a strange thing. I seem to have double standards when it comes to this. But I'm happy to learn that about myself and I'm happy to accept that um, that I do have like that there are that there that that really I am at risk because of this all the time because I do make exceptions. There are exceptions. Um yeah, anything else? No, that's really it for today. The head is good because it's so busy with the garden. I did a good bit of gardening there. Uh, I think yesterday or the day before. It uh, really makes me feel good. It makes me feel stronger. I've been doing a bit of moving. Now, yesterday there was quite a bit of carrying uh, of stuff. I've started doing the Tibetan flow, which is very nice to do. It looks ridiculous though. I saw it on video. I don't look good. But listen, it can only get better from here. Um, yeah, bring it on. Uh, physically, so I'm doing some stuff on the physical side. That it's still cold, not that great, but it's bright, which is really good. Uh, I really am enjoying the company. It's, sometimes it's odd because we're mother-daughter, but we've had some really good chats and it's really nice to have somebody to cook for and to share food with. And like the Kabi thing was just amazing. Check out the link below. If you feel hungry, if you want to splash, if you are in England or Ireland and you want to splash out on 
something really nice if you really want to treat yourself to some really, 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 really lovely um, salami. Do you know, Italian type salami made in Ireland. <laughs> it doesn't get much better. Oh, smoked cheese. It doesn't get much better. Uh, do have a look at their website and, you know, order lots. Like, uh, oh, there was another thing. Holly Kearns uh, is the new um, is a new TD up in Dublin uh, to, who's representing us up in Dublin in the government and her mother is uh, runs the brown seat and envelope seat here in West Cork. I'm very very fond of her. Uh, Madeline is her name and um, she did a speech yesterday on uh, farmers markets and uh, the right of people to have choices in how they feed their families and I will put that link down as 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 well like I don't want to do too much politics but oh my god this is a young lady to keep your eyes on because her uh, her presentation or her speech about farmers markets and um the future of farming in Ireland is very, very, very interesting. I think the thing to keep in mind is that Ireland is a country that has made a lot of money out of out of farming, mainly dairy, dairy and beef. Uh, I don't think that the old guard, let's call them the old guard for the sake of it, understand that with all of this like the economy has crashed we are looking if you if you look at the the home in the back is this is going to be more severe than the than the 1930s so this is a big crash there are no food shortages as of now although we can't get eggs because there is avian flu up up in monaghan and uh there is you know but there are going to be food shortages there is Locusts in Africa, where um, entire farming has been wiped out. China has been in lockdown. Forget rice, wheat. Like we, there was a, a scandal here with Keelings, the the strawberry growers. They put out advertisements for people to come and work for them. There isn't a person in this country that will work for those wages. That's why you should watch that speech by. Um, by Holly Kearns because she brings this up and she's saying you know for a proper wage people should be able to pay their bills and we should shorten the chain the chain of uh, food supplies to the people on this island and the minister interestingly enough really listened to the answers he doesn't answer her questions and he assumes things he assumes that he knows where she's coming from and he didn't really hear her point i really hope she will keep up the good work it is really important um allotments small uh, small growers small vegetable growers especially because we have lots of beef and yes it's being exported and we've got calves that are being exported and yes we keep to all the rules but really is that the way we should be doing things right now and i th personally i think that the moment COVID-19 hit Europe, uh, the old policies of export, with even within Europe, have become nil and void. So I understand there's a lot, a lot, a lot of money involved. And I understand that there's a lot at stake for a lot of people, but the system cannot remain the way it is. And on that note, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for being here with me and thinking with me. It's dark outside. I've got a few more things to kind of type up reports, some editing, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night.